Feeling Fine kicked us off this evening on the night beat with Spyro Gyro off the album In Modern Times. Now, I said earlier on, if you've just tuned in, it's a very exciting evening for us. It always is when Lisa Chai pops in. So now tell me, my darling, yes, Richard. life stories, yes. tell me about this. It's, it's a, an exciting thing. It's a beautiful thing. In fact, for those of you listening, Richard and I just bumped into each other yesterday and I told him a bit about the project I've been involved with and he thought that it was really cool and invited me to come in and chat. And Peter Greenwell, who's the director of photography on the project, is on the line and we'll chat. To, we'll bring him in as well. You there, Peter? Yes, I'm right here. There we go. So, very, very briefly, um, 18 years ago, my grandfather, who's now um, been dead for 11 years, the most extraordinary man, um, I just thought, he's such a raconteur and he's such a wonderful storyteller. Let me get a professional videographer to come in and film his life story, which is what I did. And it sat and it sat, and eventually we put it onto DVD and we gave it to a couple of family members. And a few watched it and there it was. And then a few months ago, during the World Cup, I made a little video and put it onto YouTube and kind of saw the light and realized how easy it is for everybody to have access to share the information with the world. And I thought, hey, hold on a second. My granddad's story is beautiful, not only for us, but for anybody Everybody, who wants yeah. The fact that there are two billion videos on YouTube is another story. But anyway, we put it on there and most importantly told friends and family around the world that it was there so they could have access to that oral testimony anytime, anywhere on demand. And as a result of that, we started a project called Life Stories, where we go around Cape Town and sometimes around the country, hopefully. And we also do interviews on Skype, where we record people's life stories, particularly people who are older, mm -hmm. who ask us to come in and record it for them on video, edit it. Um, and then also for people who are younger, who want their parents' stories to be remembered. It's a heritage project. It's a history project. We present people with a beautifully edited DVD with film and with pictures inserted over the, the testimony that's given to camera and then the best part and this is interesting to talk to some of some of the older generation is that we put it online on lifestories.co.za so friends and family around the world can, can see it all just pop in and have a look so, yeah. rather than sending that dvd through the post it's going Correct. to get lost yeah. so it's absolute open access to information and our one of our mottos is life is fleeting digital is forever or online is forever so that dvd that you're holding in your hand the life stories dvd yes. may get lost in some box it or will, yeah. in 200 years time it won't be around but please god unless we all get blown up and what we're not here anymore web 2 will turn into web 3 web 4 web 5 web 6 and it'll all be there it and it's the be best there. archive ever for our family's history so peter's your man with the camera peter's the dude hey pete I'm the dude. I'm the videographer, the professional videographer, as you say. Were well, you the original uh, vid videographer on this I'm, project? Uh, to be honest, I'm learning as you go. This is why I'm so happy and thrilled to be a part of it because it's been an extraordinary experience. E everything ab about the whole program, just just the stories that we listen to. Um, yes, I'm, I have a history of. Um, I'm actually an, a composer, sound engineer, um, musician. Um, and I, I put all these skills in. I've always been fascinated with um, with videography, and now this has given me an opportunity to to express myself and um, and to get the best messages across of life stories through this this um, expressive expressive medium of of um, videography. There's so much to know, so much to learn, and I'm learning all the time, all kinds of new things. But what I found really fascinating about the project is just sitting there, listening to the stories, the anecdotes today we were busy with a shoot and you find yourself absolutely glued to every word that they say so then you know that it's, this is just not a, this is not just life stories it's not just about a personal anecdote this, this is touching minds and hearts of everybody listening there's a general interest here before the family interest there must be this uh, yeah there would be because their stories are interesting not just for their families but for everybody well yeah. I, I realized that and pete i realized that pete was obviously the right person for the project when he just watched my grandfather's story and of course when you watch your own family stories it's so close to home you know you, you can't get drawn away from it but peter started to watch and then we interviewed a wonderful woman dory Bowles. dory if you're listening she's 102 <laughs> and her story everybody started to watch dory's story so it's this generic global kind of magnet that happens. I think it's absolutely awesome. We're going to talk some more to Peter and to uh, Lisa after we've, uh, it's quite an appropriate title, it says I can't stand losing you. <laughs> The album's called I Think It's Gonna Rain Today. He was Curtis Tigers knows something about Cape Weather, doesn't he? 
Uh, that track called Can't Stand Losing You. And if you don't want to lose those that you love, listen to what Lisa Chide has got to say because this is a good project. How long does it take? I mean, Well, the way that, that, that most of the work, and Peter, forgive me because I know you work so hard, most of the work in, in my experience is going in and I spend about two, two hours or even sometimes two and a half to three hours with someone who I'm interviewing. And it's not only for people who are older. It can be mm. anybody who has a story to tell. Mm. They're people who've come through illness. They're people who want to say something to the world. It's that you want to say something and have it on record. So I'll come in with the journalistic background or just the inquisitiveness or the history loud mouth teacher. History or the teacher. bossiness or whatever it is. Just yeah. history teacher. Yeah, former history teacher. And mm. I'll go and I'll sit and we'll talk and we just say, okay, and I'll, and I'll elicit the story and we'll together we'll decide what's appropriate to put on there. And then Pete comes along and we do the recording. And at the end of the day, what I like to do is edit it down to about a 35 to 45 minute piece which is divided up into different units so we can stick it online yeah. you don't have to have it online and mm -hmm. if you do have it online you can also have it encoded so that only certain people can see it of course so you can choose and the actual filming would take an hour to an hour and a half or a bit longer today we had someone who asked for longer and we spent about four four and a half hours there um, but at the end of the day we're really looking for something that's about 35 to 45 minutes so all in all you can turn it around pretty quickly within a couple of weeks and the time that you would spend as a person who's doing this with us is probably about five, five hours in total so we take it off your hands yeah. but I also just want to say very quickly that it's not only about getting us to come it's about if anybody listening you've got your own video cameras yes. and video I love video because video is video and audio film the people you love yeah. keep it and put it online if you can so that it's there so it doesn't get lost yeah. and it's here forever so that's the point but uh, but we were speaking earlier about this and you said that you also put in like still photographs and you put some yeah. interesting wedding well, photographs maybe in. peter can talk peter? about that because that's what he does peter do you slot in the photographs and the whole works all of that sort of thing yeah we look at the family album mm -hmm. and there's always a family album we know that in the archives you know these things that never get looked at at all we drag them out and then we go through these albums and each picture on that album has a story to tell and it's we bring them to life we take them out of the album, and then there's an anecdote that goes behind that particular photograph. And I have to say that Lisa's really brilliant at drawing out those particular stories. You know, it's one thing to just let somebody talk and tell their story, but Lisa manages to draw it out of them, get them to focus in on a particular segment, because as she said, there's like five or uh, seven se segments that we do, and we've got to narrow it down so that they talk about the things that they... Uh, they that they want to say and that makes interesting program at the same time for everybody to enjoy yes so we take these pictures and we put them um, insert them into the video at the appropriate moment and it's not just pictures it could be a little wedding video that they have they might have some archived material from uh, some other footage that they've captured like of a grandmother or, or a wife playing the piano if a particular woman some, somebody, somebody who was just done recently was particularly brilliant brilliant pianist and we had some footage of that so mm -hmm. as as the husband was talking about how she the wife was such a brilliant pianist we inserted this footage over the voiceover and uh, it becomes particularly more memorable that way so it's really a custom-made project it's Absolutely, harder. yeah yeah and i think also uh, peter if i could just say that bringing pe people like peter in and sean o'sullivan who filmed my grandfather mm -hmm. 18 years ago it's although i'm saying go and just film just get it down when you've got people who are professional and know yes. what they're doing, it just gives it that extra, what can we say, that casing. It, 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 yeah, it, it kind of... It holds it together in a way that allows the story... It yeah, it allows the story to really emerge. And it's also in the editing because yes. people aren't going to sit for three, four hours watching somebody talk. So no. it's a balance of the sensitivity of keeping the total authenticity of something, but also just editing it. it. And Peter just has such a sensitive way of doing that. He knows exactly when to bring that picture in or just to leave... The film today, we were filming a 94-year-old who was very, very moved about the death of his mom, and he had some regrets around that, and he had some tears and stuff, and so, you know, you just kind of leave it, you leave the camera rolling, and then you edit it in a way that isn't like these schlock kind of things that have shots of people's hands and tears running down, that really kind of ham it up and sensationalize it, but just to hold it in that moment and gently move on. It's so, a very special mm, thing that you're doing, because it's not just about the a the family no it's about the rest of us because i'll give you an example i mean judy's brother-in-law's father 
Yes. Judy's brother. This is, we get this okay. a lot. Okay. Judy's, Judy's brother in law's father. father. Yes. All right. He turns 100 this year. Oh, amazing. He has a pilot's license that's number 37. Now, you think about how many pilots <laughs> there are in the world, and his license is number 37. And he's there, and he's, his mind is still active. He's, he's, you know, he's a little frail, um, but not as frail as one would expect somebody to be at 100. And he has an amazing story to tell about how he went through the war, how he learned to fly, early aviation, all of that stuff is as interesting to his family as it is to me, to Brett, to Adrian, to you. And especially when you have, we've got the most amazing photographs of people in their, particularly Second World War, their uniforms. Mm. We've also got um, letters that have been given to us. Um, Dari, who's the 102-year-old who we interviewed, uh, went to deliver the the DVD to her daughter Janet who commissioned us to do it and Janet had really got sort of stirred up by this whole thing so she went and she looked in the old boxes and she found these incredible aerograms remember those forget yes, email aerograms. from 1942 that was sent by her late husband Cecil's father to Dory who was in Cape, in Cape Town at that time as a young sort of married woman and also to Cecil, who's the son, who was in Cairo during the Second World War. And we've got those letters in his beautiful hand. Mm. So it's all that stuff that we will also put on the internet. It's an absolutely keep. amazing project, Lisa. It really, it. really is. Listen, folks, we are going to get to our uh, uh, title tracks this evening, but this is just interesting. And if you're interested, um, you can go and look at the website, which is www.lifestories, one word, L I. F E S T O R I E S Life Stories. or you can phone Lisa if you want to. Yeah, I'll give my number. It's 072-377-6211. 072-377-6211. Now, uh, all of this information will go up on our Facebook page. I will have the web uh, uh, link there. We will. Um, put all the information up there for you uh, so that you can access it from our Facebook page which is The Night Beat, N-I-T-E separate word B-E-A-T it's all going to be there so don't go away, you're not going to leave us now are you? you must listen, you must stay for title tracks and see if you can get it right ok, but in the meantime we'll go to Glenn, the Glenn Robertson band and then we'll go into our uh, title tracks for this evening <laughs> 